So another motorcycle there stopping. Good morning everyone, the MMJ are back on the road and right now they're looking at vehicles parked here across from this school. Of course everyone's going back to school so uh, the MMDA want to try and keep on top of the traffic, illegal parking and everything like that. So let's go. Over here they stopped this rider, he's wearing slippers which is a dress code violation. A uh, very quick ticket and then he'll be on his way. Over here you can see there's coordination between the MMDA, QC, DPOS, PMP and the rest of the forces here today. Right now they're advising that the girl can't ride the bike without a helmet and if he continues it's at his own risk because he'll probably be ticketed again. Uh, so you can see they're now passing ways. Here's another motorcycle there stopping. Back rider, no helmet. Now you might think that that's an overkill way to stop people, but they have motorcycles running away from them all the time. Uh, they've had people who ran away and then they found out they didn't have licenses. They've had people run away and then drop suspected drugs on the floor. So they're very strict if a motorcycle appears to be failing to stop. In this case, the guy seems to be okay, he has a license, everything's okay. Uh, but they have to be strict just in case. They're just writing out the ticket now and then he can be on his way, but he's passionate we'll have to find alternative means of transport. Over here they stopped another motorcycle, the back rider isn't wearing a helmet, uh, but he does have a driver's license, so they can issue the ticket and then his passenger can go down. So over here the QC DPOS stopped this tricycle for being overloaded, excess passengers. Over here they stopped another motorcycle rider, uh, no helmet, so they just issued the ticket now. So as a holder of a student permit, he's not allowed to ride the motorcycle by himself, so it will be impounded. And you can see that bike's just going onto the tow truck now. And they just pulled in this Jeep uh, because there's excess passengers. So you can see right now the enforcer's checking their driver's license, the ORCR, and then he'll issue the ticket for the overloading or the excess passengers. See the QC DPOS are now guiding this one over overloaded tricycle. They have a pedicab here that wants to counter flow, but of course that's going to add traffic. I don't think they're even allowed on this road anyway. They originally stopped this tricycle for being overloaded with excess passengers. Uh, now he's not able to show the ORCR, so it's possible it will be impounded. He did show a driver's license, but no ORCR. And you can see that trike's just going up onto the tow truck now. They're advising this tricycle driver the maximum number of people you can have on the trike is four, including the driver. Uh, he has three in the sidecar, two here, that makes it five. So they'll be issuing a ticket now for the excess passenger and one of them will have to go down. So right now this driver is giving change to his uh, passengers because they're being unloaded. Uh, the vehicle is actually being impounded because he can't show any franchise papers at the moment. Now of course you understand why they overload the vehicles. They want to carry as many people as possible. It's more profit and they feel like they're helping the public because they're moving them from point A to point B. But the problem with overloaded vehicles is they're not designed to handle that kind of weight. So it's going to affect your braking system, it's going to affect the suspension, the way that it turns when you go around a corner. And every day you see these tragic accidents, especially with public utility vehicles, the buses for example. They're going too fast, they're overloaded, the brakes can't handle it and then they crash. So that's why you have to be a little bit strict on this kind of thing. And today the MNDA will be demonstrating the drones that were recently donated. They got three of the Phantom Force and then one Inspire 2. Uh, so they're just setting it up now. Uh, Bong and the rest of the team went on training for this with Drones PH. They're pretty much the leading drones academy here in the Philippines. Um, so they all know how to fly it. And uh, yeah, today they'll be doing some demonstration to show off the capabilities. They can use this for mapping. Uh, they can find low points for flood, uh, flood maps and stuff like that. They can also use this for the Pasig River to show the uh, reclamation of the easements and stuff like that, the cleanup. They can use it for operations to track calorums, um, to look at illegal terminals and things like that from a distance. Many different uh, things they can do with these drones. Uh, I would like to thank you to uh, Mr. Man, Mr. Mazzani, Mr. 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 Mr.
And you can see here's one of the men that actually trained them, the instructor from Drones PH. Sup, uh, sup. Yeah, genetic. Hey. So uh, that's good to see him here also actually. They had a two day course, that's to get you started. And actually it's quite a, like a heavy course. Bong is also taking his turn. I thought he was gonna fly the Inspire, but he's actually flying one of the Phantom 4s. So, you trained the MMDA to fly these drones, is that right? Yes, we trained uh, 12 people from the MMDA. And how long does it take to get, you know, familiar with the drone? Um, I think maybe just about, maybe about three, four flights, you, you got the feel already of, you know, the, the drone. And how much training did they have? Was it a few hours or days or...? Um, they had two days of training. Two days solid. Solid two days of training. Um, the first day was basically we had ground schooling for them. So we taught them everything from flight physics, safety, procedures, um, even up to rules and regulations and how There's to apply for... about where you can fly and Yeah, so on, right? and how to apply for your licenses. Um, I believe from what I read, if you're going to be doing commercial flights, that's when you have to apply for your license. Is that right? Yes, yes. And if it's over a certain weight and things like that? Yeah, actually, um, 7.5 kilos up, you have to uh, register with CAAP. But for these drones that we have, um, you don't have to. But if, for example, you're going to use it commercially, of course, you have to apply for licenses. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Sir, regarding the drones, you have a marathon show. Where are we going to use the drones? Yes, uh, pasalamatan natin yung uh, nag-donate ng mga drones na yan, although ayaw magpakilala, kaibigan natin, at uh, tapos na rin yung training ng mga tauhan natin para sa paggamit ng drone na yan. Alam naman natin sa mga panahon ngayon, eh, talagang yung technology ay napaka-advance na at uh, malaking tulong ito, tools ito, para matulungan tayo sa pagganap ng ating mga mandates. Ano? Meron kang mata sa itaas, makikita mo yung mga lugar na may problema sa traffic, sa baha. Pag may aksidente, makakatulong yan dahil uh, makukunan kung ano talaga ang nangyari. So, napakalaking bagay. Kahit saan parte ka ng mundo pumunta, lalong lalo ng mga advance ng mga metropolis, talagang yung technology ay uh, talagang nagagamit para sa pagbibigay ng serbisyo. Ito nga, salamat sa mga drone donations na ito, magagamit namin ito. So here's the lineup of the drones and also those that were trained uh, by these guys. Bong was also trained. I think they're going to do a kind of turnover ceremony, an official one, because I don't think they've done an official turnover yet. But yeah, very generous donation. And good timing because there are also some donations coming to the MMJ from the Philippine Port Authority. Uh, where do we start? Well, they're going to give these Motorola radios. These are high-end radios. They're quite expensive, so very good donation. For sure, the more radios, the better. Um, they're also donating body cameras. You may have seen this one recently. This is the same one that Grab also donated to the MMDA, but of course this time it's from the Philippine Ports Authority. We'll take a closer look at that in a minute. And then they also donated these sticks, the Abracadabra stick. Um, this actually has a few different features. So firstly, it can be flashing red, solid red, flashing blue, then blue and red intermittent. I'm not sure how well you can see that on the camera. Um, then faster blue and red and then off and on the end it has a regular flashlight so you can use it like that and it's actually pretty bright and on the end of it it has a really strong magnet so you can stick it to a lamp post or a car or something like that and then use it as a you know a light like this so that's pretty cool 
and this bit here is actually made from a strong polycarbonate so you could actually use this during like emergency situations if you needed to break out a window of a car that's crashed or something like that um, so very cool little thing and I think this will be actually very useful for MMDA that are on the road since the chairman's here for an inspection of a school new road markings and things like that uh, they also brought along one of the new body cameras so I figured we can you know grab some test footage off this so we can also see what the quality is like I always wondered how they did this. So they have a metal a metal template that they can put MMDA signage. So over here is the thermoplastic, a special type of paint that's used for road markings. As you can see right now he's applying the primer before the paint goes down. They're also they've drawn out a guideline here. Uh, they've got some metal shapes over there to keep everything in order. So yeah, let's see how this goes. So here's the machine about to go in action. There's actually a constant flame going that keeps the paint wet. And then they're throwing something on top. I'm not sure what it is. It looks like sugar. So it's actually glass beads. So I thought the glass beads were to make it stronger or more grippy, but they told me it's actually to make it reflective. She's the principal. And the, principal the principal of the secondary. Excellent. Did you ask the MMDA to come here or did they offer to go here? It's their own initiative. Yeah. <laughs> So indeed we're grateful to MMDA for trying to help us out. And you can see they're already making good progress here. It doesn't take very long at all. And you can see they're also just checking in with the local PMP. It's always good if you're out on the road to meet the locals because you know you're going to be coordinating with them for future operations. Over here they're measuring out for another pedestrian crossing. I think even the principal herself said it'd be nice if they had two because of the high volume of students. Now of course because this has a built-in screen you can easily review the footage although you'd probably want to watch it back on a computer or a cell phone. So it's now recording now and the audio that you hear is also from the body camera and uh, yeah they're putting down new road markings etc. And before we end the video, this is one of the radios that they gave, uh, Philippine Port Authority. This is Motorola CP1660, uh, pretty high-end radio actually, quite quite pricey, uh, so very generous donation. Anyway, I think that's everything, so if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.